All righty. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's great that I think this is the last one of the day, and we have such a full room that is great compared to my last talk. <laughs> <laughs> Those two of you that were here, that was wonderful. Um, anyway, uh, I'm Troy Dawson. I am the Apple Steering Committee Chair. Howdy, y'all. I'm Carl George. I'm the Apple team lead in the C the Apple sub team of CPE, the Community Platform Engineering Group inside Red Hat. Yep. And we're going to give our annual State of Apple at the FedoraCon. Uh, as usual, I like starting off with graphs. If those of you who heard Matt's things, uh, he says there's two types of things. This one is his thing called Velociraptor. And it's, it's basically the old thing. It's just getting the IP addresses of machines coming in. We don't know anything about them. And uh, it's sort of cool. We've actually broken the 5 million point on this one. Uh, you'll see that uh, Apple 7 is by far the, the biggest, and it's at 3.5 million. So anyway, this is a fun one. We have all these various points. Uh, I'm not going to point them all out. Uh, the Apple 9. You can see the Apple 9 there. Uh, I'll point that one out. It's I 165. Point at the people coming in late. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. It's okay. So, so anyway, Apple 7, still by far our leader. Now, again, these are Veloc Velociraptizer. If those of you saw Matt's thing, you know why it's di dinosaurs. And he's called them dinosaurs because we don't really know what's happening. Um, these are all done by IP address. Uh, we know things like Facebook has several million behind an IP address, so and it counts as one. Last I heard, they changed it to plural millions. Millions, okay. Millions <laughs> is uh, what we are allowed to say in public. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with an M or a B. <laughs> okay. Now this is Brontosaurus Sapphire. So Brontosaurus Sapphire is with the new, hey, I should have that in the notes, new uh, DNF check, I get this count wrong, me. count me, DNF count me. So these are only for eight and nine, because seven didn't have it, but these are more realistic numbers. And as you can see, eight's up here at two million, which is pretty good. And uh, nine is it, it's just that, yeah. I, I'm not going to, I don't ever show these with Fedora numbers because they get sad. <laughs> yes, Matthew said, has said several times that the Apple artifacts are some of the most downloaded artifacts from the Fedora project. Yeah, it's, but uh, for nine, we're only at uh, 200, basically a quarter of a million only. Yeah. So let's break those down a little bit more. Uh, if those again, if you saw Matt's talk, he, he likes to break them down into ephemeral. ephemeral things that don't last very long. Uh, one week, uh, two to four weeks, and five to twenty-four. So these are actually trends that we are expecting. I used to go over these a little bit more, but uh, for we're, we'll call them enterprise loads. We, these big 25 plus weeks things are what you expect because people don't usually use them in short loads except for testing. So we expect testing, different testing, uh, people that have a one month cycle, some people do that, they completely wipe their machine and put, load it every month, and then the majority of people. Okay, so here comes the funner things. Uh, last time we, we showed these, we did not put names here, and we, people were sad. So I'm putting names here. Um, and this is rail 9. Now, notice Rocky's in the lead, but it's at 100K. It's not really that big of a lead. But they still are. And uh, CentOS Stream and Alma are basically tied. They're fighting there for a second. Uh, rail, and there's Oracle. Okay, so, but this is nine. Nine, we sort of expect that is still growing. Rail is going to grow up because a lot of people don't really put their rail on until three or four. Or actually, we'll, we'll see. The next yeah. <laughs> it's right there. Okay, 
Now this is eight. So this has some really fun things that uh, I, I thought was interesting. And I didn't even tell Carl these so that he can be surprised. <laughs> the biggest one I think is interesting is CentOS Linux. Right here, this is where CentOS Linux 8 went end of life. And it was really fun because it went down and then it went right back up to almost a million. And then it went down. But if you see in the past uh, almost a year, it's actually leveled off to 600,000. Yeah. Some little clarity on that. My theory is, is that this wasn't that those systems went away and people deployed new systems. The way that Count Me works is, or the way that the end of life went, the content got moved, the repo content got moved to the archive, or the vault, sorry. And then at that point, uh, because of the order of the repo files, Apple stopped getting hit and it would, uh, DNF would abort on that first one that it couldn't reach. And so a lot of people would just switch those to the vault repos to keep using the same systems without updates. And then they would start contacting Apple again. So I think that dip and then coming right back is just people switching from the live repos that got retired to the vault repos that still existed but just were unmaintained. Yep, and I totally agree with Carl. And uh, But it looks like at some point, at least the, some people realized that eh, maybe we should get something yeah. a little bit. At more least some people realized it was a short-term solution. Yeah, but not everybody. So it's still in first place, but it's not by as much. Now the at the other, very end, it dips down again. It dips down again. We'll, we'll see, see if it how, stays. Yeah, <laughs> it's dipped down before. Uh, the, the second place is uh, Rel and Rocky. They keep changing over and over. That's what it is. And this last one, Alma finally passed CentOS Stream. I'm a CentOS Stream on the engineering team, so this makes me sad. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, touche. Touche, yeah. Or Oracle Linux is there, and then Cloud Linux. Um, Matt puts this actually on Cloud Linux. Now, here's the next slide. Uh, I then went and found all the distributions that have been checking in. And this is where, for me, it's fun. I'm not going to read this all. This is where it gets weird. All 101. So Cloud Linux, which was at the bottom of the last one, is at the top of this one. This is 100,000 to 100 users. There's Cloud Linux. And then looking at this, uh, actually, I'd heard of all of these, but An Anolis, I don't even know how to pronounce that. I think Analis is my guess. Analis. That is a Chinese distribution, so I've looked at it, and it's... Is that the one that's backed by um, Alibaba? Uh, it was on the Alibaba website, but it might be, like, running it on Amazon, you know. Okay. I don't know. It, like I said, it's all Chinese. Oh, I'm not even sure it's Chinese. I think it's Chinese. Anyway, for those 100, that was the one that stood out to me. For this one... Uh, these are the 100 through 5 users. Um, aren't very good. My favorite one on this is this one, Tencent OS, or Ten Cent OS. So, <laughs> I'll note that anyone could just edit your Etsy, your Etsy OS release file and put any name you want in this data. It's not hard to just come up with fun things, and you'll see that on the next slide with yes. the, sing, the smaller single digit stuff. Yep. There Yes. Oh, yeah. Why, yeah. Why doesn't have Eudora there? 94 Fedora system. Uh, there is Fedora. Wait, where did Fedora? Oh. Yeah, you got Fedora Linux. You got Slez. Yep, Slez. Yes. And Magia? To be clear, we do not recommend running Apple on Fedora because it doesn't make sense because the packages in Apple should already be in Fedora. So it's a little strange. Yeah. Now, there, there is a conflicts in the, uh, in the Apple release package, but if they just configure the repo file directly, they can still hit the repos and get counted in these numbers. So I know on another slide, you had Amazon Linux, which, uh, as I understand it, the last Amazon Linux that wasn't based on Fedora Linux was uh, Amazon Linux 2, which was mostly RHEL 7-ish. Seven. Yeah. And so people are adding Apple 8 to that release, even though it's not even close to targeting it and hoping things work. And, you know, for your Python stuff, sometimes, anywhere, it's fun. So to show how really weird this is, so, uh, oh, great, now where did it go? FUBAR, where's FUBAR? FUBAR. 
Foobar Linux has one user. And I thought that was weird because I'd heard of it. And the maintainer actually contacted me this last week. They rebuild Apple. They have, they rebuild all of Apple. It's very similar to like ELN does Rawhide. And this one thing is a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a lot of users. They rebuild Apple as, as a package gets built. They rebuild it. They just it. don't want to be counted. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, all I know is uh, that's where. Which one? Oh, no. Never uh, heard of it before. Oh, I've, I've, I remember that one from back in my scientific. Uh, that's from China. I mean, there's an IBM Linux up there, too, and who knows what that is. Like I said, anyone can edit your OS release file to say anything and put it in here. It's. I agree. Somebody did, because one's just QHF. Oh, there, I actually took a couple out. <laughs> one of them, uh, somebody had actually accidentally piped something into their thing because it was, <laughs> it was all these weird things. Anyway, I took a couple of them out. But uh, anyway, those are. You don't want a fork bomb in your slide? <laughs> no, I don't. This was just for fun. Uh, don't expect it every year because it was a pain in the rear to make. <laughs> um, this is more more serious, and uh, it's some, our maintainers, and we we are very grateful for our maintainers, both you here, those of you online, and those of you watching you later. Thank you very much. Um, over the years, uh, we've we've gotten more and more. It looks like it's going down, and, but maintainers fluctuate. Apple is a volunteer-based community. Um, even most of our stuff, now granted, Carl is currently getting paid for it, but he was a volunteer way before that. And so we want to thank you people. Um, Apple 9, uh, we did have a trend going down. So the trend is sort of to have 10 pa packages per maintainer so that no one person uh, gets uh, overwhelmed, and then Rust came in, um, yeah. and this Thanks, was Thanks, Fabio, <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> this Apple 9 got down to 11, and then all of a sudden, just Shot boom, yeah, and more sad face, I'm no longer number one. That makes me sad. Oh, uh, uh, it's not David, uh, 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 Fabio? No, he's like, Three, uh, the other Facebook person, Michelle. Michelle. Oh wow! All right. Then. Michelle is is number one. I'm like number three or four. I'm sad. <laughs> not that sad. Actually, I'm excited. I'm glad people. Yes, are. obviously, maintaining a ton of packages yourself is not great. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I was number one for so long. I never wanted to say that. I never wanted to give the top 10. Now I can. So uh, <laughs> anyway, we're, we are very grateful for our maintainers in, in Apple. And uh, on behalf of not just the Apple committee, but as the users, thank you very much. Apple 7. Uh, I'm going to start with this one and turn over to you. Um, Apple 7 will go end of life. June 30th, 2024. That's less than a year away. Uh, Red Hat recently, uh, due to the large amounts, as you saw the second slide, large amount of seven people, uh, Apple Rel seven people have made this new extended life thing. And I don't know the three or four letter acronym, but. ELS. ELS. Extended life cycle support, I believe. Okay. They, they made this different thing. But the basic ending of RHEL is happening on the, th the 30th of June, 2024. Uh, as an Apple committee, we did discuss this, and Apple is going to end on that same time. We will not be trying to extend it. The end uh, of maintenance phase two. Yes. So on June 30th, 2024, Apple 7 will, be, will go into archive. It will no longer be able to be it will no longer be maintained, and all the things that go with the end of life Apple release. Anything else for Apple 7? I know I'm, I know I'm hogging the slides or the. No, the, uh, there's one point we want to bring up that 
As you all saw in the other charts, Apple 7 is still the most popular artifacts, but it's also getting the least attention from maintainers. Uh, a lot of maintainers, they tend to like the new shiny. They're focused on, hey, I can get all my new stuff added in Apple 9. It's interesting. They like deploying it and getting all those new features. So just naturally over time, Apple 7 gets less and less attention, um, which is partially by design, similar to Rail 7. It's in the last part of its life cycle, and it's slowing down. It's getting few, fewer and fewer changes. Only the most critical, uh, critical things get fixed now. Um, so, but because it's still so popular, if you have Apple 7 packages you depend on, consider getting involved in helping take care of those because we have a lot of open bugs. We look at what open CVE bugs there still are uh, because there's no guarantees and it's all volunteer. We just kind of hope that people come along. We look at those from time to time when we can, but we would like help if you're interested. Yep. Thank you very much. Let's go to eight. Sure. I'll let you do that. Let me talk a little, huh? Yeah. <laughs> So with Apple 8, uh, we did some interesting stuff. This was the first release where we had CentOS Stream 8 and things got shaken up first a little bit. We knew we wanted Apple to, we knew how important it is for people that were using it. And uh, we proposed a new thing called Apple Next because we were starting to see that some library changes, uh, if you saw Adam's talk earlier, he talked about the application compatibility guide. So while most things in RHEL don't change very much at all, uh, you know, ABI wise, there are some things that are on a lower priority on that list that are allowed to change their library SO names and things like that. Think LLVM, QT, and there's a few other things. When those happen now, they happen in CentOS Stream about you know, four to six months before they happen in RHEL. Uh, it's the change that's coming to RHEL that's planned for and approved for RHEL. It's not some you know, wild, unexpected thing. We see it happening and we know it's going to be coming, but sometimes, occasionally, that can cause Apple packages to not install correctly. We saw that as a problem with Apple 8, and we wanted, thought about how we could fix that. So we came up with a thing called Apple Next, and that allows maintainers to optionally build against CentOS Stream 8 uh, to get their packages compatible. It's not a whole duplication of Apple, it's just a rebuild of those. Think of the times I've measured it, it was usually less than 1% of packages that had trouble with that due to those changes. So it's just select rebuilds, it's an extra repo. So Rel, Rel, Rel 8 users would use just Apple 8, CentOS Stream 8 users would use Apple 8 and Apple 8 Next together. Uh, and that's worked pretty good. There's, a, there's been some, it worked, it was good for a first attempt, attempt as kind of a bolt-on solution to the problem uh, with how we were, our, the existing way we did Apple. Um, I'll get into that. That's starting a thread of what we're going to talk about on the Apple 10 slide, so I'm going to, you know, sure. back burner that for a minute. But it worked well enough. Um, the other thing I'll point out is the end of life stuff. I know well, you're about to jump in with that. I saw you. <laughs> yeah. So talking about end of life, uh, CentOS Stream 8 goes end of life same time. Let's just say it's the same time as 7, uh, basically June 1st of next year. With that, the Apple Next uh, repo, repo is going away. Um, it really shouldn't affect any non-CentOS Stream people. But we just want you to know that it's it's going away when CentOS Stream goes away, but it shouldn't really affect you unless you. Yeah, at that point it won't be necessary anymore. Yeah, because that's the point that Rel8 enters its uh, maintenance mm -hmm. phase, and you know a lot fewer things would be changing. There shouldn't there won't be any more minor releases, and there definitely shouldn't be any more uh, library changes for lower like ACG4 packages, the lower priority ones I mentioned. Yep. Are we ready for sure. nine? So, Apple 9, we had the Rail 9 launch uh, last year in 2022, and um, uh, we actually, at one point, we thought that it was for the first time ever we launched Apple 9 before. We actually, it's not exactly correct, we found some old mailing list stuff about how Apple 7 actually launched with a beta period, so it made things a little confusing, and when you, it, yeah, it was actually a post from Kevin there. Um, so we were kind of describing it somewhat incorrectly, depending on how you viewed it. Um, Apple 7 left its beta period, after, after the Rail 7 launch. So sort of it was true, but also there was something. So uh, there were packages in Apple 7 just under the beta label uh, at the Rail 7 launch. Uh, we did some lines on this chart. At the time of the Rail 9 launch, there was 2,617 source packages in Apple 9, which was great just having those available uh, at on launch day for Rail. Um, for Rail 7, it was a little bit behind that. Um, I think it, I think you said it took about a month for it to yeah. catch up to that it, point. It was released in that May. That arbitrary uh, cutoff. It was released in May. We made it to yeah. 
in July. And it was like a month after that that, they, that we yeah. removed the beta label from it. We didn't put that on there because it was just going to yeah, make cramped. it messy. <laughs> but it's an interesting little artifact of history. So the big thing to take away is the growth pattern for Apple 9. You can see it's much, much steeper than uh, Apple 8. Another thing I'll point out here is that Apple 8 actually launched, or rather, Rel 8 launched with zero packages in Apple 8. It got a late start. There's a lot of reasons for that. And if this wasn't a 25-minute talk, I would probably get into those. But uh, if you want to know more about that, come and find me and ask more questions because it's a long story. Um, but we obviously knew that was a problem. Um, we actually got a lot of customer feedback about, I'm not upgrading from Rel 7 until the packages I need in Apple are there. I know they're not supported, but I still need them. Uh, and that actually helped lead to the creation of the team that I'm the team lead of now, the Apple team within CPE, to, f to staff that role. I, I wonder what they're saying now, that all those packages are in 8 and 9, and they're still on 7. Nah, they're, they're big enterprises. <laughs> they take a long time to change stuff. So we hopefully, hopefully this is a lot more attractive target, so that way when they're looking at their upgrades, they may just skip 8 entirely and go all the way to 9 and just get current. Uh, a lot of them won't. They'll still go to 8 first, but uh, we can't control that. Yeah. So... Go ahead and go to the next slide. So this is a, a few logos of things, of notable packages we had in Apple 9. This is from a while back. I forget when we did this. We, this is when at launch time. This was at launch time? This was okay. at launch time. That we were, we were saying, look, we have all these at launch time. And now, how many do we have now? Uh, a lot more. A lot more. <laughs> Basically ran out of space for logos. Yep. Had to resize a few of them. But yes, there's a lot of cool software there. Um, it's growing a lot, and uh, if you've got your favorite piece of software that's not up there or didn't get, uh, didn't get highlighted, I, this isn't everything. I couldn't fit everything on one slide. If you have something that you want to see in Apple, help get involved and get it added. Yep. Oh, we're at El yeah. Apple 10. So Apple 10, here's the good stuff. This is what y'all came here to hear about. So I mentioned on the Apple Next stuff, which I talked about it on the Apple 8 slide. We also had Apple Next for, for 9. Um, it worked as a bolt-on solution to get, get the problem solved, but we noticed a lot of pro some problems with it. It was unintuitive for users and un un a little bit unintuitive for maintainers as well. The, re the branches weren't created automatically in Diskit. They had to request them, and some maintainers would be confused about when, they, when it was appropriate to request a branch. Uh, we saw a pattern of maintainers building in both Apple and Apple Next just by default. They thought they needed both when they're the dependencies of the package involved weren't different between RHEL and CentOS Stream, so there was no need for it. It was unnecessary. So we thought, how could we make this more intuitive? And it's actually something, while I was digging up the, uh, the Apple 7 beta stuff and reading about that, I found out that this is an idea that's been thrown out before, about talking about having minor releases for Apple branches. Uh, so that's what we thought about doing for Apple 10. Yeah, so here's a little bit of the history with, uh, with Apple 7. We built, you know, the current state of it, it's built against RHEL 7.9. It has a disk tag in the release field of .el7, and it goes in the repo path of Apple slash 7. And then 8, you can see that still this is the current state. Apple 8 follows the same pattern. Apple 8 Next is still built against CentOS Stream 8. It gets a disk tag of .el8.next, and it goes in a different repo path. Uh, same thing for 9. And then for, ten, for, we, oh. for, for reference, we th thought about, well, how does this work? We're talking to Fedora maintainers a lot of time uh, because Apple maintainers are Fedora maintainers. If you're a Fedora maintainer and you're not involved in Apple, all you have to do is make the branch, and then you're an Apple maintainer. Congratulations. It's super easy. Barely any convenience. So here's how it works in Fedora. It does, Fedora doesn't have minor versions, but with each uh, release, we have, we have the leading branch, Rawhide, that has FC39 disk tag. And that reflects what the content is going to be. Um, and there's a very similar pattern with the minor release, minor versions in CentOS Stream. What you see in CentOS Stream 9 right now reflects the content you can expect in RHEL 9.3 that is going to be released in the fall. So there's a, I know that similarity there stuck in my head, and I kept thinking about it and wondering how could we build on that and make something that's more intuitive. Uh, when, the, when things branch from Rawhide to F38, um, or rather, in the future, whenever F39 branches, uh, the F39 branches will be created, and then the Rawhide branch will get switched to the FC40 disk tag. And they've got their own you know, repo paths. So go ahead and switch to the next one. This is what we're thinking about for Apple 10. We'll have a leading branch, Apple 10, built against CentOS Stream 10, and it'll use a disk tag reflecting the content that it should. Say this will be 
At th this point in time will be the rail 10 launch, basically. So at that point, CentOS Stream 10 will already be reflecting 10.1 content, so it'll get the corresponding disk tag for that. But it'll still, we're thinking, we're going back and forth on this a little bit, but thinking about just putting it in a bare Apple 10 path, just because that minor version of the content it's reflecting isn't programmatically determinable inside CentOS Stream itself. So the easiest way is to just think of it as it doesn't have a minor version and make the repo path work the same way. But we can still put it in the disk tag for the migration whenever we actually create a 10.1 repo. At this point in time, rel 10.0 will be out and we'll have Apple 10.0 branches with the corresponding disk tag and repo path. Uh, oh, that's one thing I forgot to bring up that we did different with Apple 9 is that, you don't change the slide for it. Okay. Um, with Apple 9, we actually we launched it early um, oh, by right. building by building Apple 9, not Apple 9 Next, by building it against CentOS Stream 9 early for about six months. That's what let us get all those packages in there early. And then that was that was a huge boom to the project and getting packages out. Um, and we thought about how how could we bring that same success? We did it for 9.0, but we're not doing it for any other minor release of nine. This brings the same concept to every minor release. And then packages, the other part of Apple, uh, Apple Next that's painful, uh, especially for Troy with all his KDE packages, is that whenever he does have to rebuild against, say, a new QT library, he has to do it in Apple Next and do all of those up updates, and then a few months later do the same exact thing in Apple all over again. He can't, there's no way to inherit the builds because of the way we designed it as a bolt-on thing. With this, we explicitly want to be able to inherit the builds so that things that you build against CentOS Stream you can just, it'll just populate the next repo path a few months down the road and bring that same benefit that we had with the launch of Apple 9 to every minor version. So, for example, for the KDE users, when RHEL 10.2 comes out, you will get your KDE packages that day. As soon as you update to the release, so it says 9.2 or 10.2, you got the KDE things because they were already built in the CentOS stream that was corresponded to 10.2. Um, and I don't have to do anything that week and you don't have to wait and have your broken... I, I, I feel bad, but there's only so... It's, I can only build them so fast. Um, so anyway. Go ahead. No, somebody's calling me. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, next slide. Yeah. <laughs> so we're still talking about all the uh, finer points of this uh, Apple 10 proposal. And uh, if you want to join that discussion, the short URL, red.ht slash Apple 10, that'll take you to the uh, Fedora discourse uh, page discussing it. And uh, there's a few breakout threads from there talking about the finer details about how we're going to implement it. And uh, that's all in flight and in progress. And if it's interesting to you, come help us build it. This is all the plan. It, it's not just the plan, it's approved by the Apple Steering Committee. It's the way we're doing it, we just haven't done it yet, and uh, there's some of the finer details to work out still. Yep. Um, I just saw the time, so we're gonna go to the next one. There is an Apple survey. We did, we're trying to do annual Apple surveys. We didn't quite get it in time for this one. Uh, coming soon, look at the Apple announce and Apple Devel. Um, we'll post about it there, and. Uh, Probably in the next week, I would say, we'll have that survey live and keep it open throughout the month of August, I think. And uh, It'll be less complicated than last year's. Yes, we trimmed down the number of questions significantly. And, and reworded them. It, I, I like this year's. And questions and answers. Uh, I, in, in, the, in the past, I... I, I maintain some packages for, for Fedora. Okay. And in the past, uh, there was an Apple uh, branch and then, then you could just push your changes. And right now I can't find it. And I, I have been trying to, to uh, I have been looking for information on how, how to put these packages on, on Apple. And uh, I just, uh, I might be bad at no, it's, searching. It's, it's okay, it is, it, is a, it is actually one of our most common questions. Um, uh, basically, you, you have to branch like you do the other ones. They are not currently automatically branched. Yeah, the command will be fed pack. In, when you're in the checked out repo, you can do fed package, request branch, Apple 8, Apple 9, whichever. Yep. Actually, oh, maybe we do have it on. The, oh, that is, if you go to that URL, 
it has instructions for Fedora packagers, non-Fedora packagers, and just end users. And instead of request. typing the whole URL, if you go to docs.fedoraproject.org, there's a, a rectangle that says Apple. Click on that, and then in the sidebar, there's a package request link right there. It'll be a little easier to, to navigate to than typing the whole thing. But yeah, that's, that's our most common question, so don't think that's a, a, a silly question. We don't do it, he mentioned that we don't do it automatically, uh, mainly because we don't always know that it's appropriate for an Apple package to go in the next branch of Apple. Um, sometimes it's because that package got added to RHEL, and by Apple's rules, it can't be in Apple if it's in RHEL. Other times, the software might just be, you know, no longer maintained upstream, so it would be a bad idea to add it to another Apple branch that's going to hypothetically exist for another 10 years. So uh, we leave that up to maintainers. We are thinking about a few things with Apple 10, uh, obviously changing the branching style to have minor versions, but also um, there's a thing called ELN Extras, which is sort of like, if you're familiar with ELN, how it's sort of like future L, ELN Extras is sort of like future Apple. Um, ELN itself is built, you know, specifically of what the content set that's going into RHEL 10 right now and then, you know, whatever future major version in the, in the future. Um, ELN Extras, anyone can create their own workload there is the term and that's just the packages you care about to make sure they keep building correctly against ELN. So in theory, it'll help reduce the work and make sure things work correctly when you build it for Appleton in the future. Uh, we're talking about ways that we can actually look at those workloads and automatically create Appleton branches for those people that have already expressed the interest, I wanna have this working on future rel. Um, but so we also, we've also talked about just creating branches and then if people don't need them, just whatever, let them, you know, retire them when they want to or just let them exist and be ignored. But I think that would be good. Not everyone agrees with me, so I don't think we're gonna go that route. Um, yep. I don't think having branches around is that big a deal, but whatever. Yep. <laughs> I don't make decisions unilaterally. unilaterally. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? We're a little low on time, but uh, we got one more. Oh, it's the end of the day? Yeah, you're not cutting into anything. So yeah. Oh, okay. You, you, you can apple till the cows come home. Yeah. Oh, good. Eight nights in an hour, so wrap up. Good. <laughs> uh, this might be a slight tangential question. Go for it. We, what have, was the... we have an hour. Oh, we have an hour. Cool. <laughs> I, can, I can go for an hour. <laughs> uh, what was the like concept behind the Apple logo? Or is that... Oh. Um... I gotta rewind my brain back. Okay, Mo is if Mo Duffy is here, she she helped. We we were we were spitballing all sorts of pictures, and she came up with sort of this one. Oh wait, where's where, where's oh there's our logo. But uh, do you want me to explain it? But uh, the the red part is rel, the blue handle is Fedora. And then the middle one is like a, a rock a socket wrench. And we figured we'd have a blue, the same blue as Fedora, because Apple is in Fedora. That's, that's the closest thing we did, but everybody liked it. So that's what it was. We couldn't have a centaur, so. Yeah, the centaur, that one never worked out. <laughs> that, was, that was sort of cool. But yeah. I, Thank Mo, uh, she, for, the, for that one. I could show you the old one and try to explain what that was, but uh, <laughs> everybody that looked at it had a different definition of what it was. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, well, oh, we do have one. Oh, oh okay. Well, thank you all. I, again, thank you for our contributors. Um, we, we really appreciate it. Uh, it's a lot of volunteer works. It's a lot of people are Red Hats and volunteer, and a lot of people are other companies volunteer. So thank you very much, uh, and we'll talk to you next year. <laughs>